Hello, this is Steve again with my electric supercharger from a Honda S2000. In my last video, the torture test, I promised everybody that I would measure the airflow better and get some really good numbers. And it didn't work out that great. I got, I'm not getting the boost I want. So I decided to go back and look at all the numbers again. In the title of this video, I promised I would do the fastest supercharger analysis in history. So let's go. On S2000, it's a two liter engine. It makes about 240 horsepower at 8,000 RPM. Red line's at 9,000 RPM. Let's calculate the airflow and the boost needed to bump that thing up from 240 horsepower to 320. I like 320 because I had nitrous on the car. I had 80 horsepower bump. I like it, especially if it's a flat boost curve as opposed to the peaky boost curve of a normal centrifugal. We have, we'll have a flat boost curve. So to go from 240 to 320, I got to put 33% more air into that engine, 33% more molecules of oxygen. Now the stock engine, we know what it does. It's a it's two liter engine takes in two liters of air every two revolution. That's one liter of revolution, 8,000 RPM. That's 8,000 liters of air a minute. Now we know the volumetric efficiency is 86% because that's the number the stock ECU uses. It calculates this exactly the same way. So 86% of 8,000 liters a minute, 7,000 liters per minute. The air density normally is around 1.3 grams of, of um, air per liter. That gives us a mass airflow into the engine of 150 grams of air a second. We want a 33% increase in power. That means a 33% increase in airflow. That's 200 grams of air per second. We don't need to include an allocation for the driving the supercharger because the engine's not driving the supercharger. So 200 grams per second. Now how much boost is required to get that? Well, we've got to increase the air density by 33% to get 33% more air, that 200 grams per second. We don't need to include the temperature because I have a good intercooler. The air, it'll have a small effect, but it, it won't change the, the density of the air too much. It's pretty much just determined by the pressure. So I've got to increase the pressure 33%. 14.7 PSI atmospheric is about another 5 PSI, 85 PSI boost. Let's throw in a PSI to account for intercooler loss and piping. So there's our requirement. We need 200 grams of air a second at about 6 PSI boost. Obviously, this, this is not a perfect analysis. And just because you increase the airflow and the fuel flow 33%, doesn't mean the power should go up exactly 33%. But this is how people usually do it. And I mean, there's other considerations. There's thermal losses and frictional losses, and they, they might not go up the same amount, but this is a, a good place to start. Here's the blower map. Here's our 200 grams per second. That's 0.2 kilograms per second. There's our 1.4 pressure ratio, and there's the 60,000 RPM line. So we're sitting here close to 60,000 RPM, about 58,000 RPM. So this is our operating point at max power. You go up here, that thing's about 68% efficient at that power. Rotrex gives you adiabatic efficiency, which includes all the power losses. Uh, I think Vortex doesn't do that. I think they just give you the power loss to the air going into the engine. So this includes all the power losses. So you can, you can calculate the engine, the supercharger power input from that. And so look at my little spreadsheet here, put the numbers in there, 68% pressure ratio. We want to go to 58,000 RPM that says there's a nine and a half to one uh, uh, gear uh, uh, ratio inside that thing. So to get 58,000, I got to turn the shaft at 6,100 RPM. There's our stock airflow. There's our supercharged airflow. There's our engine power. And this is the horsepower that's required to drive the supercharger. The blower power is the boost times the mass airflow divided by the efficiency of the supercharger. Uh, Corky Bell in his book gives you the constants that go in that, but the bottom line is we need 12.2 horsepower. Now, if the, if the electric motor is 85% efficient, I need about 11,000 watts going into that motor. So now we have the requirements for the supercharger and the requirements for the electric motor. Got 12.2 horsepower from this motor we need at 6,100 RPM, 85% efficient. That's about 11,000 watts power coming into here. 11,000 watts into my 100 volt 250 amp speed controller. I got about 85 volts of batteries and I need about 130 amps from that, which fits that speed controller. And these batteries can handle the 11,000 watts. I got a 
battery charger here that runs off of 12 volts that can keep these batteries topped off about recharge them in about one hour. So that is the, the overall system analysis. How do we do on the time? How well are we doing versus those design goals? Well, I bought a mass air sensor to see what the mass air really was. I've been assuming my little one inch hole down here is close enough. It turns out, according to this mass air sensor, uh, I'm flowing about 20%, 25% layer, less air than I thought. And when I crank this thing wide open, I'm not getting six PSI boost at 200 grams a second of air. I'm getting less than that. So I decided, let's go back and review everything I have in this system. First thing I did was look at this pressure gauge, my $13 Harbor Freight pressure gauge. Is that thing accurate? Okay, I'm going to show you a picture here. I calibrated that thing with a 16 foot long column of water. I'll show you a picture here. And it turns out it's just dead nuts accurate. How about this, this uh, mass airflow sensor? How can I calibrate this thing? How can I verify it with first principles? Well, just some reading up, it turns out that if you have an orifice of a known size and you know the pressure drop across that orifice, you can calculate the mass airflow through it. There is some unknown. There's a thing called a discharge coefficient. And um, I did my best shot at it with this three inch orifice. If you make the box big enough, you, it, it will not have any effect on the way the air enters or leaves, and you can you can do that. There's some there's some equations that show how big the box has to be. I can measure the air the uh, pressure drop very carefully, very accurately with a with a manometer. One side of this thing is in the box, one's open atmospheric, and this with water in it doesn't have water in it now. You can look at how the water changes, and you get how many inches of water. I got about nine inches of water across this thing. It turned out that this thing pretty much agreed with that thing which is bad news. Both this and this say I'm about 20% low, 25% lower in air, uh, mass airflow than I thought. So I made an attempt to use the supercharger as a load cell and actually measure the electric motor, do a dyno test on electric motor. So here's like a, a slotted uh, mount for the supercharger that's gonna allow the supercharger to rotate. I used my CNC router to, to make that. And then uh, I tried to do a dyno test, and uh, this is what it kind of looked like. Uh, the bottom line was I had too much friction in that uh, mounting plate, and the supercharger was kind of sticky in there. I could not get a real good number, but it kind of showed that the motor was behaving, you know, about like I thought. Maybe efficiency in the 80-something percent range, but I wasn't sure. So anyway, let's go look at the blower map and see what all this test data showed. Here's what we got. I got some measurements of airflow versus pressure ratio versus uh, blower RPM. And this is what it did. I'm getting a curve like this. 59,000, 58,000, 57,000 RPM. The RPM is holding up. The RPM is about correct. I wanted 58,000 RPM. But look at, but I'm not getting the boost I needed. At 0.2 or 200 grams per second, I'm only getting a pressure ratio about 1.25. That's uh, that's two or three pounds less boost than I wanted, but I don't believe the numbers. Look at this. This is almost constant RPM. This is constant RPM. I wanted 58,000 RPM. I got 57,000 RPM, but I got way lower boost. It acts like this does not match, match this blower map. In fact, you could explain this entire error. If I took all these numbers and moved them over about 20%, maybe just 15%. So if the airflow, if I'm measuring the airflow low, if they're just about 20% higher, that curve would go right down through here where it should. We got to figure out what's going on. One of two things is happening. Either the blower map is wrong or my, my measurements is wrong. Probably the measurement. But I've calibrated everything. I don't know what, what quite what to do. Um, if this is correct, I'm not going to accept it. We have to do something about the motor. We got to get more juice out of the motor. And uh, it might be difficult. Are we in magnetic saturation? Are we hit the limit? Have we hit the limits of this motor? Do I have to rewind it to get more KV out of it? Do I need to run it through a, 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 a pulley, uh, a belt to get more or less RPM? Or do I have to change motors? I don't know yet, but before we do that, I have another idea. We know that the stock engine is pulling 150 grams of air a second, 
and I need to increase that by 33%. I don't really care what the numbers are as long as I'm increasing the stock number by 33%. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that mass air meter and I'm going to put it on the engine and I'm going to go see what the car actually does. And if I can take whatever number that is and get 33% more than that at six pounds of boost, I'm good. So that's the next step.